And I'll just give you a couple of verses from the end of, of the Gospel of Luke. And you know that Luke also wrote the book of Acts. So there's a little connecting two verses here. At the end, in Luke 24, 49, as in preparing for the day of the Pentecost, Jesus said, stay in the city until you are, come on, what? Same as that engulfed word, right? It's empowered from on high. doesn't say it, but by the Holy Spirit. That's at 50. That's that year of Jubilee. That's Pentecost. They got the law in the Old Testament. We get the Spirit now to help us understand the law. And that word could be looked at as uniformed. Really like that, clothed in. And duo. You, one, some of the, I think it might be in the King James. It says, be endued with power from on high. It's a, there's a completeness about that. Acts 1, same author, different book, right? Luke finishes the Gospel of Luke and then starts Acts. And in the first chapter, verse 8, he quotes Jesus again. You will receive power. The word in Greek is dunamis, like dynamite. You'll, you'll receive explosive power to destroy strongholds when the Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKodesh, I'm sure I'm not pronouncing it like the Hebrews would, but the breath of God is going to come into you, come upon you, and live in you. Now it's just going to be your decision whether you want to yield to that spirit that's inside of you. If you do, he's come upon you. Spirit, breath of God, or wind. And just, you know, good to be reminded that in the very first chapter of Genesis, the creative power of the breath of God. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. The earth was unformed and void. Darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the water. Has anybody heard Dutch Sheets teach on, on, the, on the hovering of the Spirit? Oh, man, it's such a good teaching. He uses the example when Peter was walking down the street, and his shadow touched people, and they got healed. He was saying it wasn't the shadow. It was that there was a hovering presence wherever Peter went. And people that got close enough got touched by the spirit that was in him. Jesus said, who touched me? Because I sense that this virtue, this healing power has come out of me, right? There's a hovering presence with you. As you yield to that spirit that's in you, people notice it. They, they compare it to being illuminated, like glowing people that are close to the Lord. Wow, you think the world needs some more of that? But the same spirit that was hovering over the earth is in you now. Tell me, that's not a miracle. That's not a miracle that he could do that, that he would love us so much that, that, that he would give us that same spirit of God that was there at the creation of the whole universe is now living inside of you. Unless maybe you think you got a junior Holy Spirit. I'll leave it there. You're on the JV. I want to be on the varsity. And then God formed man out of the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. See? See the pattern? It's this creative power. God spoke, let there be light. God breathed into Adam, he came alive. And then right in the, at the end of the, the gospel, Jesus says, he, it says in John 20, 22, he breathed on them and said, receive you the Holy Spirit, right? So what happens? The same breath that God spoke into Adam, Jesus is now breathing on these men in the upper room. He was there at the creation. Jesus was there at the creation of the universe. You know this, right? I'm just trying to test your Bible knowledge here. And not, uh, Romans 8 is a 911 emergency for hell. You should, you should memorize Romans 8. The whole thing is amazing. Definitely good use of your time. Verse 9 says, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Say amen. amen. I don't want to be in the flesh. I want to be in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. And then 11 is, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. God will also give life to your mortal body, bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. That's worth dancing over. I'll tell you what. Not only the spirit that was there at the creation of the universe, but the same spirit. I can imagine this. We don't know. But I can imagine that the dead body of Jesus in the tomb. 
Something was breathed into him in that tomb, and he came to life. And then the angels rolled away the stone, and out comes the gardener, version two. Amen. I've been breathed on by the Lord. How about you? But we still can make mistakes. It's not that Christians are supposed to be perfect, but we should be pursuing God. And as the years go by, the wisdom of the Lord sets in. We keep bumping our heads when we think we don't have to follow him. After enough bumps on my head, I figure things out. Better to do it your way, Lord. Same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He resurrected our spirit. Oh, that's good news. Ephesians 1.13 says, Now we have been stamped with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. And this is the Passion Translation. He's given to us like an engagement ring as the first installment of what's coming. And Paul says it again in Hebrews, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 1, verse 22. He has stamped the seal of love over our hearts. Man, with that, what a picture that is. You've been stamped just like the king would put his seal in that wax and you would know that you belong to the king, right? Sealed it, stamped his seal and has given us the Holy Spirit like an engagement ring is given to a bride, a promise of the blessings to come. And then Malachi 4, we heard this as well, actually when Lucy came up to pray, the burden for the fathers to turn their heart to the children. We often don't make the connection of Holy Spirit being given on the, on the day of Pentecost with turning the hearts of the father to the children. But very important that the father first turns. And if, you, if you're old enough to have been through the whole Toronto revival and that whole renewal that happened in the 80s and 90s, one of the main themes that came out of, the, of that revival in Toronto and then those that followed thereafter was the love of the father for his children. It came out in the songs that were written. Many songs that we still sing today. You are the air I breathe. You are my daily bread. I'm desperate for you. It was a first person understanding of a relationship with God. Where prior to that, it was we saw, sang about God, but not so much to him. Because some of the people that, uh, that were offended by it said, we don't need that bedroom language in the church. Sorry, the Song of Solomon is in the Bible. You know, the, the one I have, maybe you have one without it, but wow, my beloved, the most beautiful of 10,000, sang that today, right? You're his beloved. You're his favorite. How could that be? Joe's his favorite, and I'm his favorite. How big is God? I don't always think of it that way. So after he turns the hearts of the father to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, if he doesn't, I will come and strike the earth with a curse. That's what, that's what it says in Malachi. And for the evidence of Holy Spirit, you'll often see some of the tough guys. When, when Holy Spirit comes in, it's like a little switch gets put on the, on the tears. The guys that never never cried before they knew the Lord, but something about Holy Spirit softens the heart. And, and this dam that's been holding back, you weren't allowed to cry for 50 years. And you get saved, and your face is all wrinkled because you've been trying to hold back those tears for five decades. And then Holy Spirit comes, and it's like, let the tears come out, man. Let them out. 